Hey, Sandra. Hey, hi. Just to know, are we still on in 10 minutes? I'm on right now. I just okay, got on. I don't, okay, I haven't received the link yet. So just to. You have not received it? Uh, you sent it? I sent it and you said it all looks good. Um, it was, let me resend it. It messaged her? It's in that longer message of what everybody got. Okay, let's me find it. Uh, kind of hard to find something in Messenger. Okay, I got it. All right, thanks. Yeah, passwords, Gaia. Okay, good. All right, bye. See you. <laughs> Hi, Douglas. Good to see you. <laughs> That's a lovely sunset or sunrise in the background. Yes, yeah, so sunset. Thank over, you. Or, um, go ahead. Yeah, sunset at uh, the Oregon Beach. Oh, how beautiful. I would like to be there like tomorrow. That's not <laughs> happening. I'd like to be there today, but I'm in Walla Walla. So, and it's oh, hot yeah. here, hot here. How is hot is it? <laughs> it's uh, 94, 94, I think it is. Well, down oh, here in Alabama today, it was, the heat index is over 100, and it was 97 uh, in the shade here today. But it's nice because the humidity, which is usually in the 80%, <laughs> is down like 30. So it's like being in the Northwest in the summertime. So, um, would, Greg, how did you find out about the webinar? Uh, you know, I think it came from Sunbow. Oh, good. Because um, he he and I connected here uh, four, four and a half years ago. I didn't know anything oh, about him. Oh. And um, I hadn't. I didn't know. Thing is, I had moved from the Pacific Northwest in the northwest part of Washington, and I had retired from law enforcement, where I'd worked for 40 years. And for 10 of those years, I worked with the U.S. Forest Service. And so when I moved down okay, hold on. here... Can you yeah. hold on for a second, Doug? Um, sure. Sunbo, your video is not on. I just, you well, just yeah. unmuted. Yeah, I just, go ahead, you're right. There you are, great, okay. Stun anyway. Bone, we finally meet. <laughs> yeah, nice. I remember your name, uh, probably from Facebook, I guess. Or... Well, we joined in Facebook, kind of on a fluke, if you will, because Camus apparently connected the two of us together. Mm -hmm. And you remember that I told you that I had a visitation from oh, him? Yeah. Yes. And you told me to tap three times on the wall and to feel for hands on me. And that's exactly what I got. So it all worked okay, out. Okay. Um, Greg, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be rude. Bear with me. But Sunbo, this is the photo that this woman took who I'm friends with. I don't know her super well. She was on a train in Colorado, one of, it sounds like it was one of those tourist trains. And she took a bunch of pictures out the window of the train. And when she was taking the picture, she didn't see anything other than the landscape, the trees, the mountains. Then she got back to her condo and this showed up. Now, what's interesting to me is there's so many, as we know, fake photos uh, like the one that I sent you before, Sambo, that was um, AI created. Yeah, this one is going around. It's very, it's viral. Yeah. This one has a beam of light coming in from above. And as I'm even demonstrating here with my cursor, my where this beam comes in and from the sky and goes down, I'm feeling chilly bumps of energy. And I keep on hearing from Mother Gaia and Sasquatch that this is authentic. There really was. And I'm, as I'm saying that, I'm feeling all this energy moving through me. So the message I heard was that this 
photo and the Sasquatch came to us this week so you and I can use this from here on out. So you can, you know, talk to Camus, talk to your teams, but I keep on getting it. This is real. All right. Uh... <clears throat> But you don't need to make a decision now with them. I mean, you can sit with it. Turning off my browser here. Uh, yeah, I'm very cautious about commenting about any kind of photo and evidence because I'm sent some uh, weekly, definitely. And, uh, and, uh, it goes with, I, 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 well, my conclusion on that is that people can believe whatever they feel. Uh, and it's not mine to decide what they want to believe. Uh, some are very compelling. Uh, I've shared some myself. Uh, sometimes people send me, sometimes people ask me to keep them private. And um, often are they're the nicest ones. Otherwise, there's a lot of hoaxes and fakes out there. And uh, yeah, it's really, yeah. I mean, uh, it's really hard to uh, have the Definite answer apart from our gut feeling. Yeah. Uh, so I, well, I, I'm not going to detail anal analysis because I've done that and it's not the point here. Yeah, so. and that's okay. I just was guided to pull this image up before we really got started and to um, to have it on the screen so that you can see this beam of energy, this light because it, it, it's coming from above and it goes down. I, I kind of lose it right in here. Hard to see. Uh, but when I saw that, and as soon as I saw the picture, I felt the energy. I'm like, oh, okay, it's a gift. But again, you you have your ways and your needs and your far deeper history with all of this. Because as we know, there's a lot of... Um, well, you're going to be talking about it. There's a, a there are a lot of falsehoods, shall we say, about um, who Sasquatch is and why they're yeah, here, they et cetera, must, et cetera. Yeah. Which, which is why we're, yeah, yeah, which is why we're gathering tonight. So we're going to get started in like two minutes. We already did start recording um, because I programmed, I set it up so that we would just start recording as soon as uh, I logged in and people started joining, just because that way I don't forget when we really officially start uh so yeah so how many people are here already let me stop share but i think it's a beautiful photo of the landscape <laughs> oh and the woman who yeah, took it, it sure said is. she was getting contact yeah it's very lovely mountains i wouldn't mind hiking there uh she said she was going to contact the uh the company that owns the train that does the train rides because it sounds it's definitely sounds like it was one of those tourist train trips and ask them if they had um set up some placard or something that's something that looked like sasquatch figure just to you know see what the company said but i haven't heard back from her so i don't know if she got any word back all, all right, right welcome everybody okay. go ahead sorry sorry go ahead i was just <laughs> going to conclude on my take on it is that the two photos uh show the sasquatch in the exact same position so that's uh consider that's all well that's food for thought yeah that's food for thought so i see we have some um people who are over in europe who stayed up late 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 welcome daphne uh love that you're here um yasmin's here yeah these are people who have been doing the great mother love way course with me um daphne hi daphne uh Wow, look at all these familiar names. Yay, 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 yay. And, and people I don't know. Yay. All right, people are rolling in. Oh, it's 7.30, here we go. Uh, so we're already recording and I am going to, I, we really wanna honor time, even though time is an interesting concept as it is, we won't go there. I'm gonna officially start Sumbo, you ready? Here we go. Hope you're ready. <laughs> I know you are. Welcome everybody. 
Uh, we've been chatting a little bit. Uh, so we are now officially starting the webinar, the uh, Sasquatch Guardians of Mother Gaia. And uh, as I always do with whenever I do any classes online or in person or whatever, I'm going to do a little bit of a spiritual call to the spirit teams that support the work I do within the Great Mother Love Way. <clears throat> so here we go. Oh. I am that I am humbly calling on the creator, creatrix. Please bless us with all that we need for this beautiful webinar, for our highest good, for divine plan alignment, for Sasquatch's highest good, for divine plan alignment, for Mother Gaia's highest good, for divine plan alignment. Please bless us, creator, creatrix, from your <clears throat> celestial universal realms. Ho. Calling out to Mother Gaia, ho oh, mama, ho oh, mama, ho oh, mama. We are your sacred children here in this beautiful and diverse and rather large sacred circle. Here to honor Sasquatch, here to learn about Sasquatch and the truths of them as opposed to the falsehoods. To support Sasquatch with their role here on earth because it's very significant. And they haven't been treated so well for a long time. Asking for your love, Mother. Asking for your support. Mm. And blessings. Anything you wish to gift us, Mother. And Sasquatch and all of us humans here, us two-leggeds, we humbly, humbly request this, ask this. Ho. Oh. Mm. Calling out now to all the spirit teams behind the Great Mother Love Way. In this work that I have surrendered to do to serve Mother and the New Earth coming in. Calling on all the guardian teams, all the councils, all the beautiful spiritual ones from whatever realms you source from. Here within the Earth's multidimensional planes and off planet. Please bless us. Please honor us. Please hold us in a beautiful, beautiful sacred space so our transmissions are clear. The Zoom webinar is clear. And may everybody feel your love and blessings, even if it's on the really, real subtle, subtle planes. Mm. And in particular, welcoming Sasquatch and your overarching council, honoring you, loving you. This is for you. This is for us. This is for Mother Gaia. This is for the new earth birthing at this time. Oh. Okay, so uh, my name, for those of you who don't know me, um, is Mayor Cromwell, and I'm a Gaia mystic and high priestess, author of several books of messages from Mother Gaia, <clears throat> visionary behind uh, the Thousand Goddesses Gathering Global Grid, and I also lead the Great Mother Love Way year-long course which has just started. So if anyone's really intrigued with that and you wanna explore it, there's still a few spaces to hop in a class or two late. Uh, this event today has been organized, quote unquote, by yours truly, <laughs> under the heading of the Great Mother Love Way Incorporated Nonprofit. Um, the Great Mother Love Way Incorporated is an organization in service to the Great Mother creating programs and events to help humanity wake up to the truth that we are part of a sacred sentient earth. And Mother Gaia yearns for us to remember her and her love for us is tremendous. She's calling for all of us to come home to her and to all the sacred seen and unseen ones and heal into our true place on the planet. And so I will introduce Sunbo in a short bit. I want to go over a few administrative details. Please save your questions to the end. I cannot stress that enough. Please save your questions to the end. Um, and it would be better if you put them in the chat box at the end, write them down while you're here on the webinar. It's very, very distracting for us if there's an active chat box of all these messages and questions. So for the sake of holding a really sacred container here, which we have started to create, the teams have come in to hold us, uh, just please write your questions down on a piece of paper. Hopefully you've got something like near you. And then 
bring them up at the end because we are reserving time for Q&A. Uh, and I will also say, I don't usually do, the, do this, but I was guided to put this out there. If anyone is very disturbing um, for whatever set of reasons in the chat box, whatever, I will have to uh, remove you from the webinar. <laughs> I'm just going to need to do that. So um, heads up. <laughs> And everyone will receive a replay email so that you can download this recording and listen to it later. Um, please download it in the next week as I can't keep these recordings in the cloud forever. Good old Zoom bills you for that. So without much more further ado, it is my deepest, deepest, deepest honor to introduce Sunbo True Brother. Sunbo True Brother is an author, an international speaker, a networker, shamanic practitioner, psychic channel, contactee, and experiencer. He authored the Sasquatch Message to Humanity trilogy. He co-authored book three in that trilogy and self-published Hairy Humanoids from the Wild, Encyclopedia of All Things Sasquatch, as well as the Contemporary Shamanic Journey series. And I read the first one of those really, really amazing adventures that some of us had. Um, and intense activations and initiations. Uh, he has three titles available in his Shamanic Journey series, highly, highly recommended. He has managed various groups and pages on social medias, and his website will, will be included in the replay email. Uh, and I do have this book uh, of Sunbow's. I'm sorry, Sunbow, I haven't gotten all of them yet. <laughs> Forgive me for that. Uh, I highly recommend you get this book. Uh, and the other ones too. It, it's just mind blowing. Um, and I actually have it as recommended reading in the courses that I lead. So why are we doing this webinar? I'm gonna share a little personal story here, not gonna be too long winded. Um, we are doing this webinar because I made a commitment on the Spirit Plains to help Sasquatch, to support them. They first came to me when I was writing my second book with Mother Gaia called The Great Mother Bible, which were conversations between her and me. And in the winter of 2014, late one night, a very strong skunk smell came into the house where I was living. <clears throat> and I knew it was something spiritual, but I didn't know what it was. It was kind of freaking me out. So I had my smudge bowl and I'm like trying to clear it and it was still lingering in my bedroom all night. And I didn't feel like I was in danger and like that, but I'm like, I, I didn't know what it was. So the next morning I contacted the Shoshone elder that that I was working closely with at that time. And he just started laughing when he heard what my story, he said that Sasquatch, he said, they are the keepers of Earth Mother. And I went, oh, okay. And it was really an honor they came to visit me. At the time though, I didn't know it was and I wanted them to leave because I didn't know who they were. Um, then in the fall of 2015, they came in again when somebody alerted me to Sunbo's messages from Camus that year. And when uh, I connected with them that time, they really came in and they started giving me all these images and speaking to me about how challenging their lives are and how the forest fires were destroying their homes and the intentionality of the forest fires, which uh, is talked, Sunbo talks about, Camus spoke to Sunbo about that. Um, and they asked me to be a voice for them as I'm a voice for Mother Gaia. And I couldn't do it. I, I just was like, that's way out there for me. It's already out there enough for me to be saying to people, I'm talking to Mother Gaia, but I promised to help them. So uh, then they came in again just a few weeks ago because there was this big Sasquatch event in the town nearby where they had people dressed as Sasquatch and vendors and t-shirts. And, <clears throat> and so one of them came at the end of that weekend, that Sunday evening and made this really strange set of noises in the woods right outside where I live. And it was a younger Sasquatch. And I knew that this was a message that they're holding me to my commitment to them to help more people wake up to who they are and how important they are and our relationship with them. So, uh, so here we are, welcome everybody. Um, and Sunbo, I'm going to start off with the first question. <clears throat> So who are Sasquatch? Can you please speak a little bit about this? Yeah, we can uh, define them like anything else. Uh, 
as well with what they are not, but let's begin with what they are, starting with their origins. So where do uh, the stories of Sasquatch come from in the first place? All around the world, uh, indigenous cultures, as well as uh, mythologies and uh, ancient legends, uh, mention some hairy humanoids, to use a generic term. Every ancient culture, or almost every one, has a name for them. We could list hundreds of names. Um, so that's part of our ancestral memories. It's part of our long, past history. And it's nothing new, uh, didn't come up in the 20th century. It just became to reach a public uh, interest in the last century. Uh, but so knowing where the stories come from, we can look at uh, what those people um, say about them, those ancient cultures. We could uh, start with the name first, because I uh, use hairy humanoids as a generic term, but I most often say Sasquatch, uh, because it's a native indigenous uh, term from the um, Alcomelian dialect of the Coast Salish people of uh, so-called British Columbia, the Salishan linguistic family. Uh, we call themselves uh, Silas there and the uh, Chehalis uh, Reserve uh, along the Fraser Valley. The, there's various uh, different Salishan dialects and languages, but uh, and for all of them, Sasquatch is very present, very important in their uh, traditions as well as their uh, cultures. So we could uh, look at where it comes from. There are other names. Uh, one is around the world that are well known. Let's just look at a few uh, like in uh, the Himalayas, the word, the name Yeti, Yeti, uh, became uh, known in the West in the 1880s due to uh, uh, British geographics mansion of that uh, legend. It is also called in the Himalayas. It's called a uh, Metagangmi. There's different spellings, which means a snowman. So Yeti and snowman are well-known terms in, uh, when it's, and it's in uh, Russia or Asia. Going back further, the Chinese uh, 4,700 years ago, probably the oldest documented mansion in literature of them, uh, it mentioned the Yeran. The Yeran as the wild, hairy man. And there's uh, drawings of them in the uh, encyclopedia back from those days. And so that name is still widely used in China. Uh, in Australia, the most famous name is Yawi. Uh, but uh, there again, there's plenty of uh, regional tribal names uh, in the South, they say more Duliga, than they are tall ones and short ones. And uh, in Europe, we could say they were known as the wood wolves that are shown on many uh, uh, coat of arms, and for instance, or carvings or paintings in the Middle Ages. There's mention of them since the antiquity in Europe, uh, and they were often called the wild man or the hairy man. Uh, some did you say? Uh, um, did you say wood wolves? 
word words. There's different yeah. spellings. So W O D E W O S E is the most common. But there's a that's a old English. But there's a, you know in German different ways of spelling that same name. That's a, there there's thousands of representations of them in uh, medieval Europe. So wow. just this just as a in a nutshell to give the an idea that they've been around everywhere and people have been aware of them since thousands of years uh, and uh, many tribal cultures have stayed in touch with those beings so who are they to answer finally this question uh, what do those ancient cultures say they are those who have interacted with them for thousands of years uh, let's take one example of the Salish people from who from whom the name Sasquatch comes, the, 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 the name we're gonna use the most. Uh, what do they say? Those uh, I've had the blessings to meet many elders and chiefs uh, and communities of the Salish, uh, the Slatium, the Sewath, the, the Silas uh, reserves of the so-called British Columbia, and among all those people, uh, Sasquatch is common knowledge, as I've seen in other places, like in, for instance, in Queensland, Australia, where the indigenous people all have a first or second-hand story of Sasquatch. They all have a relative, uh, an encounter, and they have, you mention it, it's, uh, oh yeah, we heard one last week or something. It's not like uh, far-fetched for them. So what do they say they are? Those Salish people, I heard from my own ears, from well-respected spiritual elders, more than once, that uh, they are um, well, they are the keepers of nature. They are the guardians of Mother Earth, we can say. And they also carry ancient knowledge, ancient wisdom. They are the teachers of shamans and medicine people. So in many tribes, most people stay away from them, except the medicine people who act as interpreters and uh, ambassadors for interspecies communication. What else do, they, do the, those people say? Their ancestral wisdom tells us that they are the messengers of great spirit. So they honor them, their ceremonies, they, uh, they leave offerings for them. And uh, so already, uh, you know, for some people, it's a little big to take, but what else do they say? They say they live between the spiritual and the physical world. They can move in between physical and spirit world. In other words, they are and third dimension, they can move between dimensions. And that's not new age lore, that's ancestral wisdom. What else do they tell us? They say they, say they are supernatural power. And they are shapeshifters. They can appear and disappear. They can turn into a, a tree or an animal. Uh, they can... Uh, Speak to our spirit, to what we call telepathy. They uh, also um, are connected with the star beings. So all that I've been saying the last minute, it's what the spiritual native elders who know the Sasquatch eat. I've heard that in sweat lodges and places that Nobody lies. So to, to conclude on this first point, uh, if we want to know the Sasquatch, we first of all, Sasquatch are the best source of knowledge themselves. Or people who have had encounters, genuine encounters, and especially communication with them. And if you don't find one around you, <laughs> uh, 
try the native uh, spiritual shamanic circles where those this ancient knowledge is ill preserved, but they won't come out in the public. Uh, very often they won't speak at first unless you know they know who can trust you and that you have your own uh, experience. And then you will hear that everything that I'm, I've been asked to share by the Sasquatch is this ancient knowledge. It's nothing new. Which brings us to the, uh, the next question. The next question, yes. But I also really want to stress that your books are incredibly fact-filled. <laughs> so I can't stress enough the opportunity to get some of those books. Uh, highly, highly recommended. So the next question. Um, so as we are aware, uh, because I know I've been at the checkout line numerous times and some of those tabloids have these big headlines about these Bigfoot monsters, da 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 da. Um, would you talk about the human misperceptions of them and what they are not, as in what Sasquatch is not compared to the misperceptions? Um, popular theories. It, it, this is a huge topic. And Very I know it makes Sasquatch incredibly sad how they are perceived. Certainly, and it is important to address it because uh, what people know about Sasquatch, most of it is misinterpretation, it's misconceptions. Because what makes the bulk of the mainstream Sasquatch or Bigfoot literature is based on misconceptions. Uh, and we can explain how it came to be, or why. Because uh, we can take, for instance, uh, the, the name Sasquatch when it first, apart from a couple mentioned in articles prior to that, it first became popular in 1929 when uh, John W. Burns, who was an uh, Indian agent on the Chehalis Reserve, heard stories of Sasquatch and wrote an article that was widespread worldwide and the name Sasquatch became known uh, worldwide from then on, before actually uh, the name Bigfoot in 1958. So uh, what happened is that uh, some famous researchers who made the backbone of the mainstream uh, Sasquatch research, which I call uh, Sasquatchery, um, uh, the list is on. Sasquatchery? Yeah. Is that what you said, Sas Sasquatchery? Yeah. yeah, it's like a, okay. a making of, a, of a, an epic story that is sometimes mostly based on fiction. Okay. Uh, and a deep study of that can prove this, but to be, um, to keep on track, well, they took, let's take uh, the case of John, uh, John Burns, who popularized the name Sasquatch. He worked closely with the natives for years and he, as a government agent, introduced the first Sasquatch days uh, in the Harrison Hot Springs, next to the Chehalis Reserve, which is uh, an event honoring the Sasquatch that is still happening to this day where I got to uh, assist uh, to those ceremonies once. Uh, and the uh, opening of the 1938 Sasquatch days, first time I had a government agent said, well, we are doing this to uh, honor the Sasquatch legend. Well, of course, we know it's just a legend and it don't exist, right? That's our first approach. Uh, the, all the native assistants there stood up and protested, they say, the government agent doesn't know what he's talking about because we know the Sasquatch, we know they exist. But that's the, an image that gave how it started with a Western society being into Sasquatch. We continue with, let's say, uh, John Green, which is uh, probably the most famous uh, Canadian Sasquatch researcher. Uh, one of the four horsemen of Sasquatchery, uh, according to the editors. And, uh, those guys who made basically the mainstream of what people 
know about Sasquatch name. Uh, well, he, 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 he uh, collected 6,000 reports. Uh, many of them were from other researchers. But uh, he kept about a half a dozen that he kept quoting all the time. It turned, because it's every mention of supernatural, psychic, uh, and third dimensional uh, uh, account, he discredited, uh, he labeled as a superstitious mumbo jumbo. Mm -hmm. So those are the people who pause as the greatest authority in the Bigfoot world, right? They took, he cherry picked out of thousands of accounts what fit their big ape theory. And uh, that became what everybody had access to. But mm -hmm. if you look at what um, the, that's a bit of an arrogance and of a, uh, we could say, colonialist cultural appropriation to take the Sasquatch story from the natives, but discredit everything they thought about it. We say, oh, we know better. Yeah, better. Yeah. When our scientific people scientifically are oriented, so they started to track a big ape, and, and John Green wrote entire chapters about how the Sasquatch cannot be people. They have to be animals, so we can kill them. And we need specimens on our on our table in our labs to prove they exist. Uh, chapters to advocate the killing, and that became the backbone, that pretty much of uh, mainstream Sasquatchery after that. Um, I would like to read. Uh, what are the Sasquatch? What they are not? I would like to read just here a couple of paragraphs from a. Uh, uh, hairy humanoids from the wild. It's, uh, you know, it's, can you, before you do that, just really quickly, before you do that, I just wonder if we can take a pause and just send love to Sasquatch. I know yeah. I didn't talk about this with you in advance. It just came forward right now. Can we just like pause for maybe 10 seconds and just as a group here, just send love to Sasquatch because they've been so mistreated. Uh, and they're very, very sensitive beings. Um, you know far more about them. So let's, I'm, I'll be quiet, 10 seconds here. Okay. They're receiving it. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me to interrupt you there, but it just felt really important. Right. Yes, I would just like to read about the misconceptions people have about them. Uh, Here, humanoids from the World Encyclopedia of All Things Sasquatch, which uh, I self published. It's a uh, research in hundreds of sources. Uh, many are, are quoted, and uh, so far, uh, from what I studied in this domain, I believe it's still the most complete book on the topic. So I'll read here about what some people believe they are. Uh, just examples, like, uh, are they... Uh, uh, an unknown primate? Are they a big ape? Are they really hominin or hominid? Uh, so to simplify, the, in Russia, Dr. Uh, Boris Poshnev founded the hominology to study the you hairy humanoid. Uh, it's that's a pseudoscience. It's not officially recognized, but uh, so uh, the that term hominology uh, 
refers to unclassified hominoids. So basically, uh, Dr. Porcher uh, identified the hairy humanoids uh, as the Neanderthals, an hominin. British, British primatologist Asman Hill saw them rather as a relic Homo erectus, as an hominin. Uh, Belgian French cryptozoologist Hugo Mans considered them as leftovers of Pithecanthropus and hominid, then tried to introduce the taxon Homo pongoid, but later he directed himself and adopted portion of Neanderthal interpretation. While uh, Zhugo Xin of China believed the hairy humanoids are descendants of Mechanthropus, also a nominate, Mark Hall proposed that the Dryopithecus and nominoid, opinion backed by cryptozoologist Lauren Tallman, who later opted for the Paranthropus robustus. And most recently, uh, Dr. Mel Beketchum proposed the term Homo cognatus as a nominin among many theories. And uh, the most famous, the most popular uh, classifies them as the Gigantopithecus or giant ape, a nominoid, uh, uh, which only a few bones are known. It's, they don't know whether they are bipedal or quadrupedal. And so these are all attempts now by uh, Grover Kranz and, and Jeff Meldrum. So this yeah. is they... all attempts to try to fit the Sasquatch into the Darwinian uh, right. doctrine. Uh, to but uh, what we can say is uh, they don't fit into the Darwinian model uh, because uh, as us humans, they have a splice gene as shown by the Sasquatch Genome Project, among other things, which means they were bioengineered. They were, so in other words, they are hybrid species, just like us human, but they are much older than us. And the Sasquatch Genome Project also showed, among other studies, that uh, we have 99% the same DNA, well, they are our closest relatives in uh, in all of uh, on this planet, probably in all of the universe. They also carry uh, Homo sapiens genetics, showing they have interbred or uh, shared their genetics with us. Well, this in a nutshell to say that uh, there's a lot of uh, theories and people change uh, IDs and size and stuff. But if we uh, ask the Sasquatch and what we what has been found about them, for sure, uh, this is what we come up with. Other people um, about misconceptions. Uh, many researchers are experiencers end up finding that there's more than just flesh and blood, as that's the there's a lot of big groups that say flesh and blood only, and they don't want to hear anything else, or it's just an animal. But even if, uh, if it's a really hominin, you know, they don't want, they won't want to hear about any psychic or spiritual or paranormal aspect. Well, those people are missing out because that's what explains the whole phenomenon. Uh, first of all, uh, since ancestral days, that's what legend is. So that's what's being reported by over and over and over by experiencers that first feel some kind of psychic hypnosis, or you hear it being watched, you feel thoughts sent to your mind, and uh, and then all the rest of the supernatural will address later. So, but some people still have. Misconception, knowing they are uh, paranormal beings, uh, based on fear. Uh, some things we can't explain or control often, uh, it's easy to fear. So people will uh, let's look from a biblical interpretation that is quite famous in the US. There's different ones, but I consider, uh, yeah, you know having to fit every, explain everything with the Bible. 
the Sasquatch are sometimes associated with uh, the sons of Cain or uh, the Nephilim, the fallen angels, or uh, the giants of uh, Genesis, or, and others think they're demons or uh, incubus or uh, different things like that. Uh, again, because uh, that's a general attitude to consider everything supernatural as evil. You know, if, if it's something that is beyond what we can control in our physical world, uh, it has to be from the devil in some mentality. So this is uh, to explain what are the numerous misconceptions that circulate widely online about the hairy humanoids. And uh, sadly, that's uh, what people have most often access to, uh, like monster movies. You know? yeah, there's hundreds of horror movies you know, with Sasquatch that are based on the zero fact uh but it sells so if you want to know about sasquatch don't go with the mainstream information the more some faith name or movie is famous the more it is suspicious and uh, probably less accurate so that's to cover this question here uh, thank you So, um, history of humanity with them. There's a lot here. Would you share a bit about that? Yeah. Uh, well, the, like I uh, said earlier, the uh, big part of uh, all ancient traditions, uh, we can mention uh, some mythology, like uh, the Sumerian tablets. There's Enkidu, who was the wild, hairy man. Giant and strong like the Anunnaki. Uh, in the, the Veda and the Vedic scriptures, there's a story of uh, Hanuman and the uh, Vanara. Who, the Vanara means the uh, forest people, forest men, who uh, actually joined uh, Rama and building. Uh, stone bridge linking India to Sri Lanka, and that stone bridge is still visible today. Uh, wow. 60 kilometers or so. Um, so there's uh, also, well, in China, they have Sun Wukong, a famous uh, ancient deity, powerful uh, magical uh, abilities, and uh, uh, the monkey king, basically, who could Travel the, the sky, the sky gods, and uh, uh, destroyed the dragon city, the dragon people city at the bottom of the oceans, and things like that. So we can see that there's um, the concept of powerful, uh, with ape looking, but we get the hairy people has been uh, present everywhere. Since, so you're saying uh, in China, in China it was a monkey god. There's, yeah, but there's Sun another Wukong. more a very yeah. famous uh, okay. one of the ten major deities of China. Yeah. Interesting. There's uh, also um, if we go further in history, there's uh, reports like as I mentioned earlier, the uh, 4,700 years ago in a Chinese encyclopedia mentioning the Yuan. But then we go through. Um, uh, the antiquity and the Middle Ages, and there's um, here and there are legends of uh, they, they had different names, but well, hairy humanoids, we could say, that were uh, seen sometimes captured or killed in cases. And it goes on through the Middle Ages and to a uh, historic report when we started having a more abundant documentation. And since the colonial days in the 17 and 1800, there's a lot, dozens of uh, reports of uh, those uh, big hairy humanists around the world, uh, North America, Australia, 
places that were colonized in those times where uh, even the, well, often they would see or again, sometimes capture or kill them or just chase them or uh, there were drawings since the 1700 and reports and it took through, through the 19th century. Uh, there's many, um, many times where the, what was the first reaction of those colonists were seeing them was to put up a hunting party or a post to, to, to go after them, to try to, to catch them because they were afraid or they, they wanted to find out or have a hunting trophy or something. Uh, so there has been always in history some kind of um, conflict in some cases between humans and uh, Sasquatch. Even in some native legends, we hear a couple of times they had battles and they say if you kill a Sasquatch, you, you lose your, your spirit, you, you become crazy. Uh, there's uh, stories. Uh, Skip my something, skip my, uh, but uh, so we have these um, these stories of conflict, but uh, often like like Beowulf, you know, Beowulf, we had to go kill the troll mother and his, her son to so rule over the land, and all these stories are reminiscence of uh, misinterpretation with uh, mis understanding between human uh, and the uh, hairy people. And, so, uh, so Sambo, look, can I go back just a second? You said there's one culture where if they killed a Sasquatch, they would lose their spirit? Yeah. The, 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 what was the it? The human? Of, uh, the north, yeah. The, the Simchan culture of the uh, Northwest Pacific. I have a story when there's an island where the some hunters saw a young Sasquatch and started throwing pine cones at them and they got kind of angry and killed this young Sasquatch. And they, they became crazy. And they, that place is not since then, it's been cursed and they don't go there anymore because they, the humans again created. Uh, rupture, uh, conflict, and that's most often the case. Yeah. People have stories uh, about misconception. There's a lot of scare stories uh, of attack, which when you look at in detail where it came from the origin, they're most, most of them are made up or highly exaggerated. Like people see a Sasquatch walk by, they call that an attack or they hear a call and they call that an attack. Uh, there's a list uh, we could, I'm not sure if we have time to cover all that, but there's uh, uh, there's been an ongoing um, taking over of modern humans, homo sapiens, or especially uh, European cultures over the hairy people who were the keeper of nature. So that made the history that um, I can might as well mention to a few examples here. Let's say the first, uh, John Green quoted the expedition of Anderson down the Fraser River in so-called British Columbia, saying they uh, they were they met Sasquatch throwing stones at them. But actually, that report has been widespread and share everywhere as like like you know a fact but you have to admit later that there was absolutely no evidence at all in the in the expedition archives of that it was just a rumor you heard and it became mainstream like others uh, say uh uh leaf erickson fought against sasquatch but uh, the, it's that's BFRO that spread that rumor, and everybody believes that now. 
then if you look at the, the fact in the saga, they don't say that at all. They say wild people covered with fur came in, in, in boats with bows. Well, that looks more like natives and more like Sasquatch. And uh, they were called cradlings by the, the Norse. But the report of the FRO called them scalerings, misspell. And that misspelling has been spread hundreds of places with the wrong story. So just to give an a sh example, short example, that there's a lot of stories uh, of attacks and war with the Sasquatch that have just been made, made up out of nothing or misinterpretations. And so, so the, I'm just gonna, if yeah. you don't mind, Sundo, I know I keep on interrupting you, so bear with me, but this really speaks deeply and I, we don't need to dwell on this. So I'm gonna just throw this in here though. It speaks so deeply to our fear of what is different and who is different and how even if they are not aggressive, we still make them uh, evil or, or we don't want them around us. So we create this whole fear dynamic, you know, which is perpetuated for as long as humanity has probably existed when somebody would walk into a village from another faraway village and they were different. The fear was the first reaction. So I don't want to dwell on that, but I, this is just fascinating to me. I believe this is important because that's what made the mainstream literature that everybody reads when they started being interested. All the stories they hear, are like the so-called war, Bigfoot war with the Choctaws in the 1880s, that never happened. That's from a novel. And there's hundreds of websites quoting that as a fact. So, wow. uh, and I know for a fact because a Choctaw ever the Terry's chief told me that's never happened. So there's plenty, plenty of uh, examples. Um, and there's some cases where, yeah, there might have been attacks from the Sasquatch, like the Ape Canyon story of 1928. That is very, also very famous. Uh, but if you read that again, that story, like in many of, most of those cases, the hunters, the, the miners in that case, started shooting at them. Then they had a few rocks thrown on the roof of their cabin at night and it freaked them out and they left and never returned. But that place is still called Ape Canyon near Mount St. Helens nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's more legend and, and um, extrapolation in those stories than the real fact because the man who was part of that uh, group wrote a book in uh, 19... Seven that I quote in my encyclopedia, in which he described the real story beyond what the media had uh, yeah, yeah, covered. That uh, they, they actually they were the first one who addressed those beings, and then those beings threw rocks, but not boulders. Nobody got hurt. And he also explained very clearly that he understood that those beings are supernatural and very wise. And that oh. part is never put in the newspaper. Wow. So all this to just to summarize is to, to say that what uh, people will find in mainstream uh, big foot literature, don't trust it. You know, go, if you can't find a Sasquatch yourself, find someone who's, who's found on one. And if not, look at the, traditions, a circle, a culture that have, have a long knowledge of it. That's the way to do it. Wow. So, um, so where do they live? There's a lot of misconceptions about this too. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, if we look at, uh, for a big ape or a relic hominin, from a very materialistic perspective, they cannot exist. There's, I mean, we would have bagged some specimens as some have been trying to do, you know. uh, but it, it, it's not um, because they're not limited to this physical plane. 
they love nature. They are the keepers of nature. They enjoy a walk in the wilderness, uh, eating berries, uh, whistling with the birds, and all this. Uh, but they are not bound to this physical world. And so if their territory is invaded or there's intruders, they can simply disappear into another dimension. They can teleport. They also have uh, huge cave networks where they live. And that's shown by the fact that the regions with the highest activity uh, have a lot of caves usually like the pacific northwest or vancouver island or uh, that's a, that's a, a one place they can live uh, away from uh, you know safely but without being seen uh, there's also they have those connection with the star beings so they are not limited to our planet. And since they have been here for much, much longer than us, uh, because we find uh, petrified human-like footprints around the world that are dated two or 300 million years, uh, larger than human usually, uh, which shows they've been here a long, long time uh, with the dinosaurs. So, and um, then there's been other star beings uh, that have come and gone from this planet. And there were civilizations on this planet before us humans, long, long before us humans. So, uh, they also can be found on other planets or on spaceships. And uh, that's another way they have to travel. Otherwise, they can go with their uh, interdimensional ability. They can manifest everywhere, including in people's home, uh, through telepathy, anytime, anywhere they choose, or through other um, paranormal phenomena. Sometimes something, a gift appears on your table, or they will you hear knocks on the wall or a grunt or there's a lot of ways a whisper they can manifest their presence uh, people find the three structures uh, they're more usually it's easier to find them in the woods but sometimes in suburban area or even uh, like city parks big enough so that means they can uh, basically manifest wherever they, they want. But of course- you said see, But you were saying see, people may see a tree structure. I missed yeah. part of what you're saying there. Yeah. So it's an well, actual, that, it's like something like a tree fort or what do you mean by that? Well, the, the, the Sasquatch build tree structures that have different shapes. Um, they are often a TP shape, but there can be anything square, X's, um, any, oh, any shape, okay. basically. It's a work of art. That, uh, it, many people walk by and don't notice or don't pay attention. But if you start paying attention, you look at it, you notice it's very intelligently designed. Often there's uh, weavings and the way things are uh, interlocked is required with some kind of engineering. And what are those th things? They're uh, communication devices. They, they leave signs of their presence and most people won't even notice or just walk by. If you know who they are uh, and what they do, uh, you can, no, okay, they left a sign here. Some other times they leave stick arrangements on the ground, could be a design or some symbols. Uh, that's an invitation to communicate. If you see that, you can uh, 
uh, interact, offer you leave an offering or any kind of um, uh, interaction, tele uh, telepathic communication, for instance. So, express so what kind of offerings? What what kind of offerings could we offer? Every, uh, everything works basically well. Some things better than others. Uh, let's see <laughs> what you would give to a, a good friend you respect and love, like an a elder you want to approach. Uh, but they're not fussy. Well, first, uh, try to avoid any kind of junk food or, you know, plastic and artificial stuff. Much better to offer. Uh, if, well, one, one of the most uh, common practice is uh, what they call the spirit plate. The, the indigenous do that, and I saw the, uh, the Sasquatch also do that. You take a plate, or it could be a piece of bark, and you find around uh, a place you want to consecrate, and you put a little bit of all the different types of food you have in it. Or if you don't have food, you can put a little bit of every plant. Right? Every essence of plant that grows around. Uh, uh, first, it's a meditation that makes you commune with every essence, every living uh, form of life there, and uh, honor them. Uh, other things you can leave, uh, well, a piece of hair, a, piece of, a pinch of tobacco like natives do, or uh, uh, cornmeal in other tribes, anything, a stone. So how about... A stone. Is your, how about a crystal? Like I, I teach people like making offerings for nature spirits to really create that rapport. I'm getting this is really similar. Yeah. Well, that's a way to communicate and to uh, express your intention. Uh, the most important thing is to express your intention clearly when you do when you offer something. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Instead of you know like you can. To toss something out there, you know. Uh, but if you just you know take a moment to make it sacred, maybe a little altar, or maybe a, a place you shoot a, a special place. And there's a lot of um, well, it's a good way to have a response and you know and feedback and communication. Like this. The acknowledge. Thank you. Just... But make it sacred. Very key from your heart. Very key. Yeah. Wow. Um, so what is their role here? Have we gotten to that much? We've talked a little bit maybe, but this is a okay. key part of this webinar. <laughs> okay, well, we'll try to cover, uh, cover this one. Um, well, they're all basically their caretakers. And like every intelligent species on and on any planet, that comes to realize that's what uh, most intelligent species should do. Take care. Take care. Oh. Be the gardeners. Be the the, the watchers. Watch over and uh, live in symbiosis, in harmony with the the environment. And they have done a much better job than us humans. In a, in a much longer time than we have had. Uh, so and, this, mm -hmm. Sorry, you're going you're gonna to probably be frustrated with me, but there's so many ways to take care of the land, take care of nature. So I'm wondering, do they go and activate certain areas? Do they work with springs? Do they help to clear denser energies in certain areas where maybe some humans had been partying and drinking too much beer and being too rowdy? You know, can you speak to some more examples of what is it they're doing that is um, really helping mother and helping nature, helping the forest, helping where they live? I think this is really, really important. Well, first of all, they're protectors. They, they have... <clears throat> Uh, often appeared or um, even interfered sometimes in, uh, for instance, logging operations. Uh, when um, you know their forest is being cut down a giant uh, virgin rainforest, for instance, and stuff like that. 
there, there are cases uh, I've seen myself uh, I would plant a tree upside down on the road, for instance, or they would uh, turn a bulldozer upside down. Or, uh, even there's cases where they, they throw rocks or, or, or logs. But uh, in those, all those cases, they throw them near the people, not at them, to like a warning, just to warn them, not to, to hurt them. That's one of the things, because it takes protectors, and especially them, they've been built strong, uh, 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 with very high uh, abilities, psychic and physical. Uh, but every intelligent species, as I said, is also uh, responsible of the, the planet we're given to evolve on. And before them, there were other uh, species that were caretakers of our Earth until uh, it came to us. Uh, what else they can do about from protecting? They, they, they love, basically. They, 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 they commu learn com communication with all the animals. Uh, they know all the medicine plants of the, the forest, and they basically uh, caring is loving, and they, they basically interact and enhance this life energy that, that, of their environment. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. They're heightening the energy with their love field. Yeah. Yeah. And they do the same with the ley lines or uh, power spots or energies. They will sometimes uh, leave a little uh, monument or offering or something to uh, energize those places. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. So they're like the, the first uh, and greatest shamans on this planet. Uh, they basically, that's why they have been teaching uh, indigenous medicine people. Uh, because they basically have more experience than us in doing this. And they want to help us becoming the caretakers we're meant to be. Mm -hmm. uh, they can show us all. And also to reconnect mm -hmm. with our cosmic family because uh, we're not alone in this universe. And that widens a lot our perspectives and consciousness to understand that we're part of a long, we're greater whole, a greater cosmic chain of, of uh, evolution. Oh, yeah, definitely. Fascinating. Um, gosh, should we get on to the next question? There's so, <laughs> there's so much to cover here, and I'm looking at the time. We're doing great. We're doing great. Um, so their gifts, their intelligence, their sensitivities, you've already been talking a little bit about that, but would you elaborate a little bit more? Basically, um, close to infinite possibilities, what consciousness can do. And this is uh, starting to be understood by uh, modern science that uh, uh, physical matter is about 3% of the energy that we can calculate and perceive in the universe, which means 97% at least of the energy is non-physical, which leaves the materialist science missing out on the whole story. People who just want material proof, they don't get very far to learn what's going on out there. But when we understand we live in a multiverse and multi-dimensional universe, existence that we are part of, and that our consciousness is not limited to this uh, little 4D linear space-time continuum we are so used to, and we are often trapped and led to be trapped in. We realize that our consciousness as a, as a, is creating reality. It's not a metaphor. It's literal. Uh, existence, the first condition to existence is consciousness. And consciousness not only interacts with matter, with, uh, it, it also manifests. Uh, that's quantum physics. It would be too complicated to go there, deep in that, but that explains <laughs> how, right. 
that explains how, the, let's say, all the highly evolved spiritual beings, of which I would say most Sasquatch are part of because they've had this longer evolution, uh, many star beings uh, uh, are spiritual uh, beings of different nature. Uh, this understanding uh, beyond the, the physical box. So they know they can travel, we can potentially travel, uh, teleport, travel through space and no time and travel even through time. Mm. Which is because the linear time is like a projection of an information database that is eternal, that is beyond linear time. That's mm -hmm. present of future. So that explains uh, in book two of the Sasquatch question myself to humanity, uh, they asked me to go deeper into explaining the different dimensions, what they are or, uh, and how they interact. And we have modern terms to explain this like antimatter and black matter and, and so on. But um, uh, are other terms like uh, etheric or uh, astral plane refer to those same uh, dimensions of existence. So with that under uh, knowledge and practice, uh, uh, some you know, very highly evolved uh, spiritual masters and mystics, uh, shamans, even among us humans, can attain so what they call the CDs in Sanskrit, the mystical powers, you know, like appear, disappear, teleport, uh, materialize things, and all those things simply because they understand the fabrics of the universe and how consciousness uh, creates reality. Right, right. Fascinating. Our human potential is to reach there eventually, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say that the little bit I understand in the visions I've been given by Mother Gaia about the new earth is what you're describing is where we're headed. That they're, they never left those realms, Sasquatch. We, with humans, kind of fell a bit. Um, so is it okay if we get to the final set of questions here for you and then we'll open up for Q&A? Sure, if Great. <laughs> Yeah, so the final question that I, that I gave you a few weeks ago is, what are they calling for humanity to do at this time of great change? I think many of us probably have a sense of that to some degree, but I'd love to hear what you're hearing from them now. There are some very uh, clear warnings. Uh, basically, it's like uh, the basis of all this, go back to natural, Cosmic law, cosmic order. How is this creation has rules and it's intended to work well this way. Uh, that means also to remember our soul, our soul, uh, our non physical entity. And uh, because through our soul, we, are, we find our true essence, we have a spiritual essence. We also can connect with other beings. Uh, through empathy, but our soul, a robot, cannot do that. Um, so there's big risks humanity is facing right now, and two of the most, well, there's many, but uh, one is uh, geoengineering, the, because messing with uh, natural weather systems with uh, powerful uh, weaponry, um, as it's been done for 70 years at least, uh, uh, create, that's the cause of uh, any climate crisis, if there is one. Uh, we we uh, manipulate, well, some human factions manipulate the weather to manipulate the uh, history, basically. And that is, uh, has long-term consequences and is very harmful for the ecosystems and for uh, including us humans. Another very dangerous risk that we all face now in uh, this phase of our evolution is the transhumanist agenda. 
and that again is playing God and uh, uh, twisting the law of nature and trying to bypass uh, the twist the law of nature, whether by manipulating genetics or um, uh, introducing uh, cyborg, you know, human to machine interface with uh, their integrated uh, chips and their artificial intelligence, like it's already been done increasingly, actually. So that's a very, very dangerous path because there's been other races uh, across the cosmos that have tried that before us. And actually, uh, some of them have passed on to us those technologies and those karmas. So what is like uh, Atlantis? Yeah. So what is humanity going to do? Uh, are we going to realign ourselves with the natural and cosmic law, which is direly need needed needed for our own survival for the sort of the future uh, evolution of our collective consciousness, or are we going to? Just let those artificial agenda uh, build their matrix and control our destiny. And there is the answer that they have given me is that but there's uh, many prophecies that have foretold what's happening, that there are two paths, two ways that are splitting. And both of those ways will lead to different outcomes and results. We cannot or, uh, prevent or stop someone who chooses to take another way. But everyone will get according to uh, the directions they, they, they head to. So as an uh, individual, uh, we have to reconnect with our soul, remember, our spiritual essence and abide by those natural laws that uh, maintain everything in balance, the cosmos. And we will eventually evolve into higher consciousness and a better world, while parallel in, in parallel, there will be this artificial uh, cyborg society that is being developed. It's going to last a while, but it's not sustainable, so it's not going to last to forever. Uh, there might be races from the stars that have turned into cyborgs, and uh, uh, but they are direly needing to reconnect with their soul now, and that's why some of them are uh, interested into us humans. Mm. Okay, this is but we could. This is this goes deeper and deeper. I'm looking at the time. First of all, what you shared was just profound, just the pieces that you shared, they're big. Um, and one question to you, and then we'll open up for questions. Uh, the natural and cosmic laws, are they listed in your any of your books or all of your books? Or do you have a list of them? Or I think we all, we all may have a sense of what that means, but I'm just curious. It's probably an infinity of uh, details about them, but basically, is um, there's a certain fabric, uh, the, the universal matrix we are part of that has a coherence and that has a significance, that the meaning that keeps things together and, and, and functioning. And when we start messing with that, thinking we're better than nature, uh, as some scientists do now uh that's when we see the consequences the young balances that are created mm. so to describe in a few words this cosmic order it can be seen in the fractal geometry that is uh, impregnated in everything from the subatomic particles to the galaxy clusters that a uh, certain pattern, certain ways, for instance, the spiral, uh, certain polarities, positive, negative, that hold all of uh, the universe together. Those things uh, tell us 
when we read them, what, what is the law of the universe? Right, right. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Um, so I'm going to look at the chat right now. And uh, I'm seeing if there are any questions. I'm wondering. Okay, Glorious has a question. I've wondered how to stop ge geoengineering. I think that's beyond this webinar tonight for us to focus on that. Um, however, be a really good activist. Uh, okay, so Kim has raised her question and has. All right, go ahead, Kim. Um, you're going to need to unmute yourself. It's good to see you. <laughs> I don't know if you want to turn your video on. You're really faint. Okay, let me get closer to my computer. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah, I don't know if, what, if you want to turn your video on or not, but go ahead, go ahead and um, ask. I'd prefer not to. I'm not really video ready, if that's okay. Um, no, thank sorry. you so much for, for holding this. And um, it's just, it's amazing to be here. I have kind of a, a little quick question. Um, and Sunbo uh, mentioned it a little bit. Since they're multidimensional or interdimensional, do they do the, the Sasquatch eat? And it, would it be like for just like a general pleasure of the senses and the physical when they're here? Or like, um, and if they do eat, what do they like to eat? Well, they can eat. Yeah, they can eat pretty much everything like uh, people. Uh, there's a store, uh, many story of uh, they're seen gathering berries or uh, fishing or uh, hunting. I found myself once um, well rolled deer skin and very clean bones that uh, were left by them, for instance. Uh, but uh, eating or sleeping and and all those uh, are reproducing are uh, physical needs that uh, the we experience once in the physical. If they can, we were if we could switch between the uh, uh, physical and spirit world, and we could spend time, for instance, without feeling hungry or tired or sick. Uh, I bet we would spend a lot of time out there. And we would probably once in a while want to come and eat down some blueberries or something. But uh, we would like to be in this uh, higher dimension most often. And where also aging is uh, totally on a different scale. So that's why some of them can live thousands of years in our human years. Mm. Interesting. So there's another question from, thanks, Kim. Um, Mary is asking, is there a good place in the southeast of the uh, US to meet with them, a special, I think she meant forest or region? I must admit, uh, I've been through the 48 lower states, but not so much in the southeast. And uh, I've been had encounters there probably the last but the only quarter of the united states have had encounters and so but there are people uh, there's many stories there's uh, uh georgia the appalachian uh there's groups uh there in the more uh, north carolina and uh, south carolina around there in the, the appalachian there's uh, a lot of sightings and encounters some people also uh, communicators are out there i mean i have a friend who um saw one near dc in northern virginia so okay um question from jennifer shoop my experience with the sasquatch has been super loving and informative have you found the same they told me they like potatoes they told me in a journey they like to visit the void yeah, well, it's a bit of what we were just talking about. Uh, um, they can uh, travel in other dimension where they're not uh, bound by their physical needs. So, um, and how, how, you know, wise and loving and, and, and 
funny. They can be, you know, uh, the, it's uh, beyond words. It's uh, everyone has different experiences, but the more you get to learn with them, uh, uh, communicate and interact. Uh, first of all, it's not everybody's path because some people uh, have an experience and get traumatized and they just want to shut it off and that's all right. Uh, but you have to overcome the fear and uh, go with the right intentions, which is uh, love, peaceful, friendly, wanting to learn. Uh, honesty, honest, and no ulterior motive because they are telepathic and they will uh, they will just uh, not listen if we we try to trick them. It's not gonna work. So yeah, the, they're they're great teachers. There's so much uh, to say about them. Uh, time flies, but um, uh, I guess we could move to another question. If there's one. Um, yeah, Jennifer saying thank you. All right, another question. Douglas, you sent me a, a list a, a, um, in the email you sent me, Douglas. So I'm kind of picking on you right now. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know. Well, um, yeah, the, you know, some of the questions uh, Sunbo had, had, had kind of answered, so I won't go along that. But it's interesting. Uh, I've read some accounts. Uh, alleged accounts from humans who have basically been blessed with being allowed and, uh, and, and invited through the portal into the Sasquatch, the land of the Sasquatch. And their descriptions of, about the, the land and the beings there and the, just sort of the vibrancy of the colors and just the, the whole sensations was reminded me of, uh, I mean, Mayor sent out a, a group email about a, about a month ago or so where Mother Gaia uh, took her on this amazing journey into the the ascended 4D Earth, and I'm you know the similarities between those two were were remarkable. So I was wondering, you know, is that is that what the is that where the Sasquatch live? They live in the 4D Earth that that we are evolving into, or, or does that make sense? Yeah, well, in uh, multi uh, parallel dimensions. There's a, uh, uh, which can be uh, either space time, uh, another timeline. Uh, uh, there's uh, definitely uh, portals, and that's uh, been more and more uh, studied, even by NASA and uh, official sources. Uh, some uh, exist naturally, some can be created artificially, like with uh, particle colliders, for instance. And some can be created by consciousness uh, with enough uh, no understanding and knowledge. Uh, uh, Sasquatch do, and I've seen them. Well, I'm not the only one. Many people, but I've seen sometimes half a Sasquatch appear, wave at me, and disappear, or a mm -hmm. big Sasquatch disappear between a tree this this wide. Or there's uh, things that are beyond the laws of physics as we know them that they can do uh, that uh, is easier to understand once we realize the multi-dimensional existence, uh, nature of existence. And interdimensional, I use this word as the ability or knowledge to, to move between dimensions. Thank you. All right, any other questions? I would love to wrap this up in the next six minutes because I'm sure that Sambo is tired after giving so much of his energy here. Uh, so we do have time for another question. Um, uh -huh, Jason Price is saying they are from the seventh dimension and can project themselves into lower dimensions. Nobody wants to raise their hand, ask another question. I do want to, somebody, Good one of question. you, um, oh, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. There's another question in the chat room. Do the Sasquatch perform or do healings to nature and to humans? Oh, I missed that. Thank you. Definitely, like uh, any uh, highly evolved 
spiritual beings and who are by nature caretakers. They do, uh, in cases, uh, it can help some people with uh, healing. Um, and they have, for me, uh, starting with soul healing, by understanding, for instance, uh, what we have to work on, what's the ancestral karma, the collective uh, karma contract, kar uh, karmic contracts, and what we have to deal with. Uh, because also uh, we have the power to heal our bodies with our consciousness. And that's so some techniques, uh, some practice that are uh, quite very uh, efficient uh, with a sufficient practice. Uh, as well as, of course, uh, all the medicines of nature, the plants, for instance, uh, I've used on my life and I will carry on because um, uh, that's what we've been given. So the Sasquatch are definitely uh, familiar with all these things. They can leave a gift or um, guidance to bring you to, to do what you need to do to, to heal. And in my experience, that's more likely how they work to help you find yourself your healing work on your healing. What other, other than that, they can still, you know, at times take off, take away a pain or something, but they will definitely uh, help us become the healer. Thank you. Um, so Iona has a question. She raised her hand. So go ahead, Iona, you can unmute yes, yourself. Thank you. I, I love this, but I'm really new at it. So forgive me if this sounds really dumb, but if I hoped to um, connect with a Sasquatch in a very uh, special but somewhat public place, do I use verbal words or just my soul? Well, it's a, it's a good question and it's, uh, it's often asked, it's basically, it starts with your soul, your intention, your, your what you project, the energy you project. Are you coming uh, in fear or in love? You know, are you coming uh, with expectations, or you have something to offer? Are you coming uh, to offering friendship? Uh, so, if you come with these good intentions, they will uh, see it, they will hear it, and uh, it is, it's been proven over and over. Don't try to trick them because. You'll be the. You'll be the one. I just, I just want to learn. Thank you. Yeah. Well, but when we express uh, our intention clearly, it could be in words. Uh, it kind of manifests our thought and intention, and uh, so it's a good way as well. You know, like I, like I call, you can say prayer. You know, when we 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 can pray uh, interiorly, or we can pray out loud to. Transmit this energy to the universe, and the universe will hear. So every high consciousness being in the universe can also hear us. Thank you. So from your heart, drop to your heart. That's you know again and again. If you want to communicate with trees or the nature spirits, or even with another human in a really beautiful way, but mm -hmm. I am certain I'm not the Sasquatch expert that Sunbow is, but from your heart. So you guys, it's um. 8.59 Eastern Standard Time. Um, I thank you. Yeah, Josie, he did answer your question. <laughs> thank you to everybody who joined. Thank you, especially to Sunbo for taking this time and doing a lot of preparation with your notes for this. Uh, this has been really a pleasure. Uh, I'm going to be re-listening to this. Uh, and again and again and again, probably when I can find the time, but his books, please get Sasqu Sasquatch's books. Yeah, Sasquatch's books through Sundo. Um, uh, and you're welcome to those of you who are saying thank you. And if you are interested in the work I do or the work the Great Mother Loveway does, you can go to the website. All this information will be in the replay um, email that's gonna go out to you guys in the next two days. Okay, so lots and lots of love. And I will also say this, 
And Sunbo, forgive me for this because I didn't ask you in advance. I was going to put in the information for the replay. Please don't share this with other people because this was, you know, registration. But then I got a very clear message. No, this information really needs to go out. So I wasn't going to put that in there. And I, I and I haven't sent that email out yet. So Sunbo, is that okay? <laughs> I definitely. Uh... Yeah, this information has been going out and I've uh, been uh, involved in spreading it. So everyone want to, want to share, like, accurate for me, everyone is free to share what they, they like. Thank you. Thank you for your huge heart and your huge commitment and surrender to them, because I know this is a huge path to surrender. So everybody have a wonderful rest of your evening or day, whatever time you're in. It's been wonderful to meet all of you. And to those whose questions came forward to me one on one, I'm really sorry that we didn't go there. Um, that's a whole other conversation. So much love, hugs, and enjoy the rest of your uh, evenings and days. And thank you, Sunbo. Thank you. Bye.